Shaggy hair's gone, lockdown's over. Hello shooting riders. I've been out riding with some of you lot and it's been very exciting and I would like to tell you about what happened. So when Shoot and Ride started, uh, I, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago now, something like that. It was a bit of an experiment uh, to see if other people were interest, interested in, in what I'm interested in, which is riding bikes and taking photos. Um, and it turns out quite a few of you are all over the world. Very, very exciting writing envelopes to people in Japan and New Zealand and America and places that are just literally the other side of the world from me. Um, thank you very much for jumping on board wherever you are in the world. Um, I had this idea that it might be good fun to meet up with some of the people within this community. So I, I wanted to do this kind of quite early on in the project actually, um, right at the start was to, to arrange a, a meet up with people and then COVID hit and you know, we've talked a lot about that, we don't need to talk more. But here in the UK, restrictions are starting to lift and we can meet people again outside in groups of up to six. So last week, is it Friday? Yes, last Friday, I uh, met up with some local, well, sort of local, local in terms of like Tokyo and Japan, but <laughs> but still quite a far away for, for a day's ride. Anyway, I met up with some um, shoot and riders here in the UK for a shoot and ride out. And it was great. We had a bunch of guys come down from all around the country. We met up and had a, a, a fantastic day out in Northumberland. The weather was a bit pants. What are you gonna do? Um, but I just want to kind of take a minute or three or four to uh, tell you a bit about the day and introduce you to some of the people that I was riding with. Uh, it's quite exciting, it's, it's like a shoot and ride review, but instead of actually reviewing people's Instagram photos that I've never met, I actually can review their real life photos because I was there when they took it. So it was a bit of an experiment to see if, A, I could convince people to come ride with me, and B, if the experience of being together um, on the day and exploring somewhere new and me firing some hints and tips at them might be able to help them improve their photography. Um, I don't know if it did. Uh, they left me a little video review on a GoPro which we'll watch at the end. I haven't watched any of these reviews yet um, so it'll be interesting to see how they found the day and it's a bit of an experiment. I might do more. Uh, if you think this is a good idea drop me a message um, if enough people want to do it, I'll do it again. Okay, here we go. These are actually some of the photos that I took at the end of the day after we'd kind of all been out riding. So this is uh, David uh, on his Ducati Scrambler. Uh, David come up from the Midlands somewhere. Um, everyone explained where they were from and I can't remember. But <laughs> I'm going to say somewhere Peak Districty, you know, the north, if you live in London, uh, the south, if you live in uh, Northumberland, like I do. So Dan, uh, Dan is actually local. He's up in Northumberland himself. Um, quite a keen photographer, gets out quite a lot. And this is his BMW F650 GS, I'm gonna say. This is Dave. Um, he'd come up quite a way. Um, he actually came up in a van because I think he'd had to do the school run that morning and drop the kids off and then kind of come all the way up. Again, I'm going to say from Midlandsy area. Sorry, Dave, I can't remember exactly where you're from. But uh, yeah, a, a good few hours drive, put it that way. And he's up on his CRF, uh, Honda CRF 250L. This is Andy. Uh, so when Andy turned up, uh, he was frozen to the bone. And Andy came down from, he's up north of Edinburgh. So I think he'd ridden on his uh, CRF 450L for about three hours just to get to the start of the day. Um, and he said at one point he had to stop and thaw his hands out on the uh, exhaust because he was literally riding through snow um, to get up across the borders and across into England. So uh, yeah, massive effort for, for Andy. 
this is Simon. Simon's local to me. Um, he's based here in Northumberland. I know Simon and Simon does a lot of motorcycle tours. He's actually a tour guide and he gets us to take a lot of photos of people on the trips and I think he just wanted a few tips to be able to improve. We all met up at a cafe um, uh, in Northumberland uh, near the Derwent Reservoir and everyone introduced themselves and one of the key things that I did on the day is I put together these kind of cheat sheets, flashcards um, and I emailed them to everyone. I didn't email, I was on a WhatsApp group and um, so everyone had these in their phone and uh, one of the challenges for me is to try and figure out kind of what is valuable to you in terms of tips to improve your photography that is pitched right at the level that you're at and what I learned from this this day is that quite a lot of people within the shooting ride community are very passionate um, about what they do but they've not necessarily had any training so everyone's kind of quite at like the beginner level um, and also a lot of people are just using mobile phones which is fine totally fine um, so it's really about trying to kind of get across some tips that you can apply in a very simple sense um, to your mobile phone motorcycle photography that you can then kind of build on as you go if you kind of want to get DSLRs and different lenses and all the rest of it but the principles there are really fundamental and having put these cheat sheets together I've kind of realized that maybe this is something that the shooting ride community might want a little bit more of so I think I'm going to start elaborating on these in my newsletters to focus a little bit more on kind of practical tips yeah if you if you want to get on board with that and get on board with the uh, the new training regime uh, subscribe to the newsletter and, and over the next year you'll be on that journey with us to improve your photography. So at the end of the day, everyone shared their pictures on the WhatsApp group and we've all kind of been sharing our ideas about how the day went and the pictures that worked well. Um, there was a lot to get through in a day. It wasn't a guided tour. My part was at the start, we all kind of um, had a meeting point and we went through some, some stuff and then it was self-guided. Um, and I pointed people towards the Northumberland 250 route, which is something totally independent to me, but it's a really beautiful road route through Northumberland. Um, and so people could follow that at their own pace and their own leisure. Um, I encourage people to team up so they could kind of, it's always easy if there's someone else there that is trying to do the same thing as you. So what, one of the challenges when you're riding in a group and you're the one doing the photos is that it takes quite a lot of time to take the photos and you always feel like you're slowing people down whereas if you're with someone else that's there to do exactly what you do you know you don't have to worry about that so some of the guys paired up uh, and I paired up with someone um, and we had like a start point and an end point and it was up to everyone else to go out and have a little safari really um, between those two points so one of the first places we stopped was Blanchland which is a beautiful um, village kind of in South Northumberland near the, the border with County Durham. Um, <clears throat> it's very kind of picturesque. It's got kind of beautiful stone buildings and it's kind of, yeah, if it's snowing and it's winter, it's kind of, you know, picture, postcard, perfect, kind of oldie worldy. Um, so these are um, Andy's pictures. So he was on his CRF 250L. And one of the things that we talked about was getting your kind of camera in a low angle. Um, something that I do a lot, I think I've talked about before, I think I'm quite inspired or, or, or kind of directed by my childhood comic reading. Um, if you can bring the camera low, you can create quite a lot of drama in terms of perspective and the way things disappear off into the distance. So this is um, Andy's CRF 450L in a little archway. Um, one of the ideas I was talking about there and you know I can show you kind of how a different crop on this might work but this idea that if you if you kind of have the bike at where the the light is kind of coming into the tunnel the front of the bike will be lit and the back of the bike will be dark um, if you had like more control over the exposures uh, in your camera you could really kind of darken off the background on here but the other thing that Andy's done here is he's put the camera really low and one of the reasons why I do that as well is that with uh, mobile phones, the mobile phone tends to just keep everything sharp. So in a more technical sense, it has a very, uh, the aperture is very kind of high somewhere, you know, it, it just wants to keep everything in focus. Whereas 
What you might want to do is have a bit more control over what's in focus and what's out of focus. And by doing that, you're, you're, you're directing the viewer's eye to something that you want to see by making the things that they don't want to see out of focus. And that's quite tricky to do it without a DSLR and a, and a, a nice lens. So one of the, the tricks that I've used on, on mobile phones is if you put the phone, especially the, the camera lens, kind of really close to the, to the floor, so you can actually literally turn it around so the lens is almost on the floor, it's got no option there other than have whatever really close to the lens will be out of focus, it'll be blurry. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I do that and you can see at the bottom of this picture Andy's got that little bit of blur at the bottom um, and it creates quite a dramatic kind of stance to the bike. Um, it makes it feel a little bit kind of beefier and a little bit more like, you know, standing proud, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and a little bit of signage. Signage is always great because it kind of, you know, it tells people where you've been. Um, so well done, Andy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your shoot and ride day and I enjoyed looking at your pictures and you've got a really, really sweet Sierra 450L. <laughs> it's really tricked out. Um, so yeah, on to Dan, Dan's uh, photos. So uh, what I noticed from riding with Dan, even at the start, was that he was taking the effort to actually stop the bike and look for interesting photos. And that's something that some of the guys had talked about early on in the day was um, when they're out riding, they, they're kind of just riding. Um, and what they realized, I think, by the end of the day was that you've kind of really got to take the effort to stop and there's quite often where I'm riding along and I'll go past something and I'll be like, oh, that would be a great photo, but I can't be bothered to stop. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, but, you know, it's always worth it if you then stop, do a U-turn, go back, spend 10 minutes getting the shot and then move on. Um, so, yeah, that's something that I noticed about Dan. So um, I really like this photo. So Dan's kind of, we talked about framing um, and there's a few things in, in this photo set. So uh, Dan's gone out and I think maybe that's um, Dave's bike up there and maybe Dan's waiting for Dave to get ready. Or maybe actually Dave's taking a photo of his bike and Dan's further down the hill. But I really like that, that you've got this sense of scale, that um, the bike's actually quite small in the frame, but that's okay, you can't see the details. It, the fact that it's in the middle, bang in the middle of the frame, it kind of brings you and draws your eye into it. And because there's nothing behind the bike apart from sky, it creates a silhouette. Um, so yeah, well done. Really, really like this photo. Um, so the other thing that Dan was experimenting with was this idea of, well, we talked about making a photo as opposed to taking a photo. So there's different ways of interpreting that. To my mind, taking a photo is you jump off the bike, you get the shot, kind of reportage style, fantastic. Um, making a photo, and if you talk to kind of artists that use photography in their craft, they'll talk a lot about making shots, making photos. And that's kind of taking the effort to set up. You're almost creating a still life. Um, you're kind of creating the scene. And that, that act of making creates a different result. So in here we've got, um, well, we talked a lot about putting the bike side on um, and making the effort to get it symmetrical. One of the things is that um, quite often, so you've got a road, a track or whatever, it's going that way and you're riding that way with it. And quite often if you take the bike and you, and you turn it so it's kind of 90 degrees to the track, you, you, the track creates this like natural frame to the bike um, and quite often the track's kind of the perfect width of the bike as well. So you can see here, Dan's taken his, his uh, GS. Is it, am I allowed to call it a GS? Is it a GS? I don't know. It's BMW. Um, and he's turned it side on. Um, and there's other things that you can experiment with here about kind of the angle of how high you are and how low you are and how much sky. Because obviously the more the bike that is behind, the, uh, that has sky behind it, the more silhouetted it becomes and, and it frames it in a different way. But automatically you feel like someone's taken the effort to create something nice and neat and framed and it creates a different vibe as opposed to just jumping off. And I noticed as well, Dan's got the um, bike wedge there 
Uh, it's just, I think Dan was actually one of the first people to buy the bike wedge. Uh, so it's really nice to meet someone that's using it. And again, that just props the bike up, makes it flatter on and um, gets a bit of a neater angle on that. Um, and again, um, I think the side on thing's great. So this is a photo that is more a take a photo than make a photo because what I imagine has happened here is uh, Dan said, okay, I'm gonna go stand over there. Um, Dave, can you ride past and I'll get some photos of you going past. And what he's managed to do there in that shot is he, he's, he's got Dave riding past really, really well framed against this huge Christmas tree. And he's managed to frame it so he's got the, all of the tree up into the top and you get that sense of scale. Um, you know, that could be, you know, riding through Scandinavia or something like that. It's this great shot, really, really like it. And he's got this kind of, because he's framed it, um, the bike at the bottom and you, there's actually a lot of space above the bike, a lot of weight above the bike. It really makes that forest and that tree seem huge. So yeah, great, great photos, Dan. Okay, so Dan and, uh, and Dave, um, so that's BMW and, and CRF 250L. They went off and had a little adventure themselves. Um, <laughs> I think they had a bit more of an adventure than they'd planned. Um, so this is, uh, I really like this photo from uh, Dave. Uh, there's something about leaning a bike against a post or a wall as opposed to using the side stand. That's just, I don't know how to describe it. It's just cool, you know? It's, I, to me, it harks back to kind of a, a, a bike that is designed for the track that doesn't have like a, a side stand so you have to prop it up. It's also a bit like, I don't know, there's something BMX-y about it, of like being a kid and leaning your bike against the wall. Um, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit deviant and a bit naughty, I don't know, but, but, but leaning a bike against the post is great. And what the guys have done here is they've taken the time to lean the, bike in lean the bikes against the posts in symmetry. And again, using this gate as a frame um, I, that is something about that shot that I just really, really like. And then obviously you've also got the reflection in there as well. So there's a lot going on. Um, I think I would have liked both of the headlights on uh, or both headlights off. It's kind of just odd that one's on and what's not. But um, other than that, you know, yeah, great shot. Well done, well done, Dave. Um, and then we talked at the, again at the start of the day about kind of creating textures and using things behind the bike to create textures. Um, and so obviously here in the UK, we've got dry stone walls everywhere. Um, and not every country has got dry stone walls. And actually, if you're in the Netherlands or I don't know, Germany or wherever, Australia, and you're looking at these pictures, you may well be interested in our dry stone walls that we just see all day, every day. So. Uh, what Dave, I think, is doing here is he's kind of using those dry stone walls as a bit of a texture behind his bike. Again, he's, le he's lent it against the wall um, and it's got a bit of a British flavour to it, I think. I don't know. If you're not from Britain, tell me. Does this feel British? So on to David and David's Ducati Scrambler. Um, so David had to kind of disappear off and get some fuel at the start of the day. So he kind of, kind of took a, a different route to many of the other guys. Um, and uh, so he's, he's propped this up here against a, a monument somewhere, I don't know, maybe near Hexham. Stuff that I like here is that you've got the railings are completely kind of um, horizontal, which kind of shows the angle of the road. Um, and again, he's taken the time to kind of really set it up and get everything neat and square. Um, and I think that's something that um, David experimented with a bit more that idea of squaring the bike up against the track going off into the distance. This is on um, one of the highest uh, trails in the UK that go, is often co totally covered in snow. In fact, probably yesterday it would be covered in snow because it was snowing a little bit here. Um, there's a real sense of drama here, I think, with the sky. You can kind of see those clouds kind of rolling through. Um, and then the interesting thing here is we've got two kind of shots of the same location and the same bike. So this is obviously he's taken a few steps forwards and he's gone up and, and shot and cropped the bike uh, much closer to the, to the camera. And it gives you a different sense. But again, it's that, that you kind of, you've, you've got those layers of foreground, midground, and background. And to me, that works really, really well. You kind of see the trail disappearing off into the background. Um, you know, you look at that and you think, okay, this guy is on, on a bit of an adventurous journey. Um, 
And I dare say on that bike, on that bike with those tires, it probably was an adventurous journey going up over this trail. So yeah, well done. Um, okay, so there's a photo of me. So kind of on to um, Simon. So with me, so Simon and I rode together because, well, just because um, everyone else shot off and Simon and I have ridden before. So I kind of know what Simon's capable of. Um, so this is a, a shot of me. This is what Simon ended up looking at a lot. This is me with my 5D Mark IV. Um, and this is the, this is what I was looking at. <laughs> so Simon actually brought out a, a little DSLR. Um, I don't think he was that confident using it. So he did end up using the little point and shoot um, uh, and, his, and his, did he use his phone? I'm not sure. But I think the point there was that that idea of the best camera you've got is the one in your pocket. And I think what Simon struggles with a little bit is on his tours is taking the time to get a big camera out. And actually the camera that's in your pocket is the one that you're gonna use all the time. So quite a few of Simon's um, shots were taken on just a little travel portable camera. Um, okay, yeah, so this is uh so i'm going to kind of throw some of my photos in here as well so um this is us kind of getting ready to go and this is dave having brought his paper map out which you know probably sounded good in theory and in the idea but actually when you're out riding and you've got a great big paper map and you now need to kind of fold it over to figure out where you are can be a bit of a challenge um, and that's why people use gps's but you know fair play good effort for giving it a go um so yeah so this was simon and i were kind of heading off this is now kind of over into county durham really um and the sleet started coming down and oh, it was a bit grim to be honest um but there's this, this bend in the road um that uh, it's got this like beautiful background and on a good day you can see for miles and it's really really dramatic so we pulled off um, and this is me kind of working with Simon to try and figure out a good angle and show an, an, an experiment with how angles and where you are and where your kind of camera is high low mid you know how that can change the vibe of a shot so this is Simon's uh, KTM 450 EXC and we took the effort to make it square onto the background, something that you're getting the, the idea of the theme there. Um, and, this is, and this is Simon's shot of, of his bike. It's what a fantastic adventure bike. I would say that I've got one. Um, but yeah, it's square onto the background that's disappearing off and you kind of feel like that that bike could go anywhere. Um, and unfortunately for Simon, in the terms of this kind of video review is that he ended up riding with me, um, and so I took my photos as well. And I've been trying to figure out like, kind of like the most polite way to, uh, to approach this, the fact that we're now going to have a look at some of my photos of the same stuff. Um, I don't think Simon or mine too much. You know, the main thing that I, that I hope Simon took away from this, I hope you took away Simon, is this idea of... Um, taking your time and if you've got people there that want you to take photos while you're on your tour um, just be just simple compose it but take the time to make sure everything's square on oh can you just move a bit to the left could you move a bit to the right make sure you're in the middle you know and and rather than kind of just getting the camera out snapping and going if you can just breathe and take a minute i think you can end up with a much more powerful it doesn't even need to be powerful just just a neater better picture really um so this is simon this is me taking a photo of simon standing behind his bike so there's something there about you put the person behind the bike um so they're kind of bit can be a bit awkward you know where do i put my hands and stuff you just just relax take your helmet off whatever put it on your on your bike but that's we've got that idea of the bike is the foreground the character is the mid ground of like the focus of what you're looking at and then you've got this beautiful background creating a really kind of beautiful backdrop it's almost like the backdrop in that photo could be printed on a wall behind you know what i mean it's almost like a wallpaper um and i'm using a bit of um so i've got my dslr and i've got a different lens on there and that allows me to um make the background slightly out of focus which again brings your attention to the person um, and I've kind of cropped that so the bike is just just kind of in the foreground it's almost like some of those previous photos of where the wall 
you know, you stood behind a wall and the wall is the foreground, but it creates a frame to the photo. Um, and then I was blessed with riding with Simon because he's just got this most amazing beard and face. You're a nice face as well, but the beard is just like epic. It's so like Nordic Viking. And I think over lockdown, he's kind of managed to grow it out. And with this helmet on, it's like poking out underneath the bottom of the helmet. It's just like, it's epic. Um, so yeah, you, uh, come and ride again. I would take photos of you all day, Simon. You look absolutely brilliant. Um, and then this is just me taking a few steps back and getting a wider shot there. And you can kind of see that's, that's the same shot from three different angles, or not even angles, three different distances. You know, so you've got like a very tight crop on the head and then you've got a mid shot and then you've got a wide shot where you get the whole thing in and <clears throat> each of those photos has got a different vibe to it. So then <clears throat> we rode on um, and this kind of rode on the Northumberland 250, which is kind of, um, I think I'll put it on a map roughly where we were, but it kind of winds through some kind of really beautiful, bleak, landscapes um, you've got to come kind of watch out for the sheep because they just walk across the road and you really feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no one else around and, you know and for england that's quite rare you know if you're in canada there's like loads of places where that exists but here not that many so it is quite special and kind of scattered around the landscape you've got all these like corrugated tin huts um, of different sizes and some of them are still in use as like uh, sheep uh, farm kind of buildings and quite a lot of them are abandoned the roofs are falling in and all the rest of it and we we rode past one and I had that moment of like I saw it and I was really enjoying the ride you know the PR7 was really smooth kind of and we, we looked at it and I kept going and I was like no turn around we got to go back so we turned around and went back and kind of I could have spent three hours there I mean we probably spent about an hour you know maybe 45 minutes setting up shots on this, this um, corrugated tin hut, um, but it was really, really dramatic. So uh, yeah, so this is my bike, my AJP PR7 and Simon's bike just lent up. And you know, I, I don't know that this particular photo worked that well. I think I probably took it a bit too extreme by kind of ha having the camera too low. Um, but it, I, what I quite like is you've got this kind of green grass and then this kind of black car going down and it's kind of cut in half. Um, and then kind of the bike in the same place. I haven't moved the bike, but just going up and getting different crops there. Um, crops of the bike, the, like bikes and bits of machinery, they'd be really interesting bits of machinery. And you know, when you start cropping it so you don't get the whole bike out uh, in the shot, they, they, it starts making kind of really interesting shapes. Um, and by having this flat, textured background behind it it makes you look at the shape rather than the shape disappearing into the landscape behind um, and then like f going back to this idea of framing um, doorways gate posts um, this is like the entrance to um, to the to the shed now if the shed had had like a complete if it had been a closed shed and the back of it wasn't open i think it, you'd get a really kind of dramatic black kind of background to, to shoot against. The fact that it's open is, you know, it's not quite as neat, but that's okay. But the idea is that you've taken the time to create this symmetry of putting the bike in a frame. Um, oh yeah, and on this, on this one. So one of the points that I put in my cheat sheets was like, we read um, left, that we read and write left to right. And so in a lot of my, images the bikes actually going left to right and even in my films i try and take the effort of positioning it so when i've got a shot where a bike is coming through the, the the shot it's going from left to right and there's something about that that feels like natural that the bike should always be going left to right um, and on my bike the exhaust is on the right so you actually get a nicer shot where the exhaust is and the, there's looking at this now I'm like, damn, why did I not just turn the bike around? Because to me, there's something a bit off about having the bike going right to left. It doesn't quite feel right. It feels like you're kind of going against the grain. Um, not as a big deal. It's just a little point to kind of like raise. And then this is Simon using my camera. Um, again, bike's in the same spot. 
I've gone and stood behind the bike and I kind of just said to Simon, just take a few shots, but try and make sure that everything's square on. And while Simon's doing that, um, I'm just dicking around, like taking my helmet off, lifting the lid up, going look at, you know, one of the things, you know, looking at the bike as though you're doing some GPS thingies. And, you know, you become a model there uh, to an extent, but you want to do something that feels a little bit more natural so that the photo seems a little bit more like he's caught you in the act as opposed to creating a, a setup shot. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that w works really well. And, and he's actually managed to get me bang on um, symmetrical with the framing behind. And there's something neat about that. Um, so yeah, this is Simon is taking some photos of my bike again. Uh, if you notice, I've got this kind of bike in the middle and you've got this idea of thirds. Um, each of these points I really need to kind of do a separate film on, but there's, um, there's, a, there's a lot of kind of, there's almost a science behind this idea of like breaking an image into thirds. So top, middle, uh, top, middle, bottom, left, middle, right. Um, and in here you've kind of, it's quite neatly broken into thirds where the bike is the middle and you've got um, Simon on the left and then you've got the framing on the right. And it, there's something kind of very natural about that. And you even find that a lot of cameras kind of actually have grid lines. You can put grid lines on the back and that will break it up into thirds for you to help with the framing. So I've talked for like half an hour already. If you stuck with it this long, thank you. Um, I could, honestly, I could talk for another half hour. And what it's really telling me is I've got to start breaking some of this down. And if you're interested, I'm going to think I'm going to start doing some more practical videos um, and my newsletter about how you can kind of pick up some of these tips but what I wanted to end up with was I, I, I gave the guys my, my GoPro we all went and had um, a late lunch early dinner at the end of the day and I gave the guys a GoPro and I asked them to kind of just do a little video um, of just a little message about how they got on with the day so I haven't actually seen this yet so we're gonna watch this in real time um, I yeah if they say anything bad, I'll probably, if they say anything bad, I'll probably edit it out. <laughs> but let's give it a go and see what they said. <clears throat> I think we're on. Oh yes, we've got a red light, so we're on. So, hello, I'm Simon, and uh, I've just completed a day of shoot and ride with Greg Villalobos, and we've had a, an absolutely fantastic time riding around the beautiful countryside of Northumbria. Um, learning how to take much better quality photographs uh, of motorcycles and our motorcycle adventures. Um, we've only been at it for, for one day, but boy, have we learnt a lot in, in, in the short time. You know, great, Greg's great in, in uh, getting ideas across very succinctly, very clearly, giving you some real good pointers, but then, you know, letting you get on with your creativity of uh, having a go with it. So I... I um, I have to confess, I've had a digital SLR for quite a few years and never really done much more than just sort of point and shoot with it. So I'm really fired up after today, after today to, um, to you know, try and get out there and take some, some better quality photographs. So thank you very much, Greg. It's been a really inspiring day. Oh, that's great, Simon. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed the day and I really, really enjoyed riding with you and I'll ride with you anytime. So yeah, thank you. Hello, my name's Dave. I've just been on Greg's very first uh, shoot and ride out day, which has been a very interesting day out. I hooked up with a guy called Daniel. Um, we ended up mainly going on trails all day and getting very lost and stuck in uh, quite a nasty trail which we weren't really planning to do and ended up being late for tea <clears throat> but what can I say we think we've got some good photos um, we've had a great day out and I would thoroughly recommend coming to do this if you're into trail riding road riding photography on you know bike photography you will absolutely love it um, yeah, recommended. Thanks, Dave. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. It was good to meet you as well. Oh. Recording. 
it was really good. It was really good to meet you and Dan and Andy and David and uh, yeah, uh, I can't thank you guys enough for making the effort to come up and, and ride. So yes, let's do it again. Uh, that is the thing that I've taken from this is that I think people do want to do it more. So uh, yeah, and if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you very much. Fire some comments down. What is it that you would particularly like me to focus on as we move forward? Um, is any part of kind of shoot and ride? Um, photography tips that you want some advice with let me know and I will do my best to cover it. Take care, safe riding. <laughs>